Recent developments have seen the LDS Church's tithing fraud case take an unexpected turn. A federal appeals court has granted the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints a rehearing in the case brought forth by former member James Huntsman. This decision by the court brings a new dynamic to the ongoing dispute. The Ninth U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals is set to conduct fresh oral arguments in June. This is not a small matter, but one that requires a full set of judges to deliberate on. Huntsman's allegations against the church leaders claiming they misled members about the use of tithing funds, particularly in relation to the financing of the City Creek Center, will be dissected and examined anew. In response, the church's defense has been stressing on religious liberty and autonomy concerns. This surprising twist has sparked a flurry of legal debates on free speech, religious protections, and the potential implications for other organizations. The crux of this case lies in the allegations made by James Huntsman and the defense put forward by the LDS Church. James Huntsman, a former member of the church, has levied charges that leaders of the LDS Church may have been less than transparent with their members about the usage of tithing funds. The bone of contention? The financing of the City Creek Center, a commercial endeavor which Huntsman alleges was bankrolled using these tithes. On the flip side, the LDS Church has put forth a robust defense. They underline the principles of religious liberty and autonomy, which are the bedrock of their operations. They argue that the management of tithing funds, including their allocation, falls wholly within the purview of the Church's leadership. This, they say, is protected by their constitutional rights to freedom of religion. These contrasting views present a complex legal conundrum, the resolution of which is eagerly awaited. The case's reinstatement has far-reaching implications and has even brought to light related lawsuits. One of these involves the Church's settlement with the Securities and Exchange Commission over financial practices. This aspect of the case has been referenced in other lawsuits, demonstrating the ripple effect of legal matters, often casting a wider net than initially perceived. Moreover, the potential implications of this case extend beyond the confines of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Other organizations, particularly religious institutions, may find themselves under scrutiny over their financial practices and transparency. This case could potentially set a precedent, prompting a re-evaluation of the boundaries between religious liberty, financial transparency, and accountability. Furthermore, the issues at hand are not just legal but also ethical and moral, provoking a broader conversation about the stewardship of funds within religious communities. The intersection of faith and finance is a complex one, and this case brings that complexity to the fore. As we await the court's decision, this case will undoubtedly continue to stir conversations and debates in legal, religious and public spheres.